Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about how we can use the AI to predict uh, used car prices. We are using Azure AI and currently we are in the Azure AI machine learning studio. In order to create any uh, AI solution, we need to have some data. This data will be used to train a model and to make the predictions. So the data that I'm having contains about 4,000 rows uh, of data about different brands of cars from different years with different mileages uh, and some particular colors and the prices that they currently have. So in order to make a good AI um, solution, uh, very important is the data set and also a very important is the algorithm that we are going to use. So first of all, uh, this is the data set uh, that we will be using for our solution. Let me get back to Machine Learning Studio. Uh, first thing that I want to do is to go uh, in the compute section and create a new uh, compute instance. The compute instance is used in order to um, uh, train the model, in order to run the jobs that we will create. So it's basically like a virtual computer that has some characteristics and can uh, process the data. So in order to create a compute instance, we will need to first give it a unique name. Then after giving the name, you need to select what type of virtual machine we are going to create. For this experiment, we will uh, use the CPU, not GPU. GPU is for the graphical um, types of jobs. So we will use the CPU type. Then we need to select the uh, characteristics of the virtual machine that we will be using. So I'm just going to select from all the options and I will be sorting on the cost. Uh, because this is just an experiment that we are doing for, for demo purposes, we don't need to select something very performant. So I'm content in using maybe even the cheapest version. Um, then after uh, checking that everything is okay, I just hit review and create. Here in the scheduling part, we could uh, be careful and in order to avoid supplementary costs, we can schedule the compute instance to shut down automatically after some idle time. So I'm just selecting like after 20 minutes, I will just uh, turn it down. I would like for it to be turned down. So then having everything set in place, we just hit create and um, the compute instance will be created. Now the next step into uh, creating our AI solution is to go in the design area and create a pipeline. So basically this pipeline uh, co will contain all the steps necessary for our AI to make the processing. So first, first thing we have to start with the data. So I'll just uh, create a new data set, name it used cars data set. Uh, it's a very good name. Then go to the next part where we, I am going to import the data from my local machine. So I will go to the upload files, then I will select the CSV uh, file that I previously showed you, go to the next part. Um, here in this part, we can see the a small preview of our data. Then next, we can check the data types that we have, the columns and the data types. This seems fine. And then in the end, we have the review uh, where we can check again all everything that we went through up until this uh, point. So if I uh, hit create, then uh, my file is imported and I can use this data. Then the next step that I have to, to take is to uh, put some components in place in order to create the pipeline. So I have to split this data. Why? Because part of this data will be um, used in order to train the model, the AI model, and part of it will be used to uh, to score the model. So I am going to take the split data component. I'm going to link my data set to the split data component. And then when I open the properties of the split data component, I can say that, okay, 70% of this uh, data that I'm having will be used here for one data set and the other 30% for the other data set. So we will have two data sets, like 70 and 30% of the total uh, data that I have uploaded. 
Then the next component that we will use is the train model. The train model basically um, will take our 70% of data, uh, will run it through a algorithm. I will choose a, a linear regression algorithm for, for this one. And it will train the AI to recognize the characteristics that I want. So in the train model, I open the properties and then uh, in the label column, I select the column price. This is the, pro the column that I want to predict. Okay, then I can close the properties. Then next, I go to select a new component, which is the score. The score will basically take the trained data and will uh, link it with the other 30% um, data set. And then it will compare it and test, test against it to see if um, everything is okay. And in the end, I will take a evaluate model uh, component that basically will conclude the pipeline that uh, I have created. Okay, so after I have everything in place, uh, make sure to save or to, to, to make sure that the auto save is, is on. I go to configure. Uh, I will just create a new experiment, um, give it an experiment name. So after giving the name of the experiment, I will go to the, com uh, to the runtime settings and I will choose a compute instance, which will process my uh, AI pipeline. So if uh, everything is okay in the review, I click submit and then I have to wait. I have to wait until um, the compute instance will process my pipeline. So first it will uh, take the data, then it will split it, then it will apply the algorithm and then uh, it will train the model and the score model. So uh, a new job has been created uh, after I have submitted. So I can check this job and see the progress that uh, where we are in the pipeline. So at this stage, the job is created and the job actually means the fact that the compute instance will uh, start processing my pipeline. So first it will take the data, then it will split it into two uh, data sets, 70% and 30%. 70% based on the algorithm that I'm using, will we will train the model. Then uh, after the model is trained, the data from there, the trained data will uh, be compared against uh, other untrained data. And this will happen in the score model. And then finally it will conclude in the evaluate model. So after the pipeline has been uh, completely processed, we can just go and check through the components. For example, in the split uh, data component, we can check the first data set and we see that we have uh, about 2,800 rows, which represent 70% of the 4,000 that I initially had. And then um, we can check the second data set, which contains about 1,200 rows, which represent the other 30% of my total, total data. So then the algorithm has trained the 70%. Then we can preview the score uh, data set, which contains some uh, analysis of the data that uh, has been used. And then in the evaluation, we have some statistical uh, values that can be interpreted. Then the next step in order for me to be able to use uh, this pipeline is to create a kind of a real time instance of, of this pipeline. So as I am uh, selecting this action, a new job will be created. And here in this design, I will also choose the um, a missing component, it's about the web service input. So basically, I also want to have a web service which can um, which can call this model and uh, to be able to make prediction on some specific data that I will be sending through this uh, web service input. Then uh, using the configure uh, button, I will select again my experiment. So you can create a new one, but I will just use the same experiment. Then in the runtime settings uh, properties, um, I will select my compute instance that I am I have previously created and used for the previous job. And then in the review submit, I can check everything again. And if everything is okay, then I'll just click on submit. 
Uh, this will take some time again, about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, depending on your compute instance, how performant that is. But we will just wait until this gets done and then we will get to the next uh, step. So then we open the job and we check if everything uh, has been completely uh, processed. So since this is com uh, completely processed, in order for me to be able to deploy those components, I have to first go and create a Kubernetes cluster. I'll create a as compute type cluster, I'll just create a new one, uh, select the location. Uh, basically, uh, the location should be the same uh, location where I'm having the resource group. Uh, for me, it's the w Western Europe, because if you select the same uh, location, then uh, the processing will be a bit faster. So then I will just have to select a new CPU. Uh, I'll just select a, a low performance one because it will save my costs. I will give it a name and then I will uh, change the cluster purpose to dev test because we are just testing. This is not a production uh, project. Then I will leave the number of nodes to uh, one uh, to save costs again. And then I will just create this um, Kubernetes cluster. The Kubernetes cluster will be used to host my endpoint. So then I can call it from a app or from a Postman. For example, we will use Postman in order to uh, make calls to our AI uh, service. So after the job has been completed, I need to uh, click on deploy and then I will create an endpoint. The endpoint, I will, I will give a name to the endpoint and then I will select the Kubernetes uh, cluster that I have created for this. Uh, the Kubernetes will just host the endpoint and allow me to, uh, to test it and to call it from outside, uh, like from a different app so I can get my prediction. Okay, so after uh, I submitted, then I can go to the endpoints and actually I can see the endpoint uh, that I have created. The only problem is the fact that it takes some time for it to be deployed, uh, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes. So when the deployment state will change to healthy, then I can use this endpoint to be able to test what I have done so far. So once the endpoint is healthy, I can go to the test tab and check what we have there. Uh, we can see that on the left side, uh, we have a lot of inputs, but uh, in order to make uh, this test very clear, I'll just use one input. Um, so we have the brand, the model year, we have the mileage, we have the color and the price. So if I click on test, I can see that I have a prediction in the scored labels field in the JSON format, I see that I have a prediction of, of the price. However, if I change the year, I can see that this prediction has changed. Now the price is a bit higher because it's no longer 2013, it's 2018, the model of the year. So then the price is higher. So if I have a car which is even older, or like having a 200,000 um, miles, then you can see that this will affect the price quite a lot. I can check, uh, I can change the color. So for example, a red car, a red BMW, maybe it's not so uh, often uh, fabricated. So then this will be a, a much higher price. If this car again has a smaller mileage, then this will affect the price again. So it's very, very interesting to see how various um, characteristics can influence the price in the end. Now, the next step is for me to be able to consume uh, this um, AI, to consume this service from outside, from a app, let's say. Um, for this, if I go to the consume tab, I see that I have a rest endpoint, which is a link actually, and I have keys. Uh, basically in order to consume the service, I need to authenticate. So I have a primary and a secondary key, both are valid. So in order for me to um, go to the next uh, test, I will copy the URL, the REST endpoint URL, and in the postman, I'll just create a new request. So this request would be of type post. 
I will post my link. Okay. And then I need to make a authentication. So in the header section, I will add a new key, a key, uh, which is called uh, authorization. And I will paste, I will copy the one of the keys that I have and I uh, will say bearer uh, space. And then I will paste the, my, my key. Then in the body, I will have a row type JSON body and I will again uh, select one input for us for the test to be as clear as possible. So I will copy the JSON that I already have in the machine learning studio. And let's say, okay, we will test again with a BMW. We change the mileage and uh, yeah, let's, let's see what we have. If you click on send, then we see again that we have an estimation, a prediction for the used car price. Then again, if we change the model year, we will have again uh, a different prediction. So again, we can test the fact that the characteristics of the car that we want to buy, let's say, uh, will influence the, the price of the car. So uh, very, very important. Again, I want to highlight the fact that the accuracy of the prediction um, depends very much on the data set that you're using. So the initial data that you have has to be correct. And then very important is the algorithm that you are using for this um, prediction to, in order to train the model and to have a prediction. So in the end, I hope that this video has been useful to you and that you will be able to take this knowledge and apply it in the future. So if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and maybe hit the like button. So then I will be seeing you in our next AI tutorial.